In this video, I want to show the use of hidden components in creating joints of motion. We will be using three different assemblies. One of a wheel running along a roadway. One where a table can move up and then tilt out. And the last one will be a planetary gear. We'll only do one of these. Let's start with the wheel and the roadway. We have three components in this assembly. The roadway, which is grounded, the wheel, and a dummy part, which is the same diameter and thickness as the wheel. To get started, I want to activate the dummy component because I want all the features to fall within it that I create. I need a tangent plane on one side of the dummy part really doesn't matter which one. I'm going to choose the top, which is convenient to me. I need to make a sketch on this surface. On that sketch, I need to make sure I have a point dead center between the sides. And since I modeled the extrusion symmetrically about the origin, I know the origin point is in the center, so I'll turn it on. I'll go to point, zoom up, to be sure I get the origin and pick. Finish my sketch and turn my origin back off. At this point I need to add a joint origin. So I go to joint origin. It may automatically go to the center of the part. Just deselect that and pick on the point. You want to be sure the circles are, are tangent to the outside of the dummy part, which they are. Say OK. The next thing you want to do is activate the top level. Then we're going to add a joint, a slider joint between that joint origin and the roadway. So the slider joint between this joint origin, be sure you get the joint origin and the roadway. It's on the wrong side, so I'll flip it. And the motion is going the wrong way too, so I'll change that to the x-axis. Next thing I want to do is add a revolve joint to the wheel to the dummy part. So go to Joint, Revolve. First selection is the wheel outside edge to outside edge. They were the same thickness, so they'll match up. Say OK. Next thing I'm going to do is hide the dummy part. I don't need it anymore. Expose your joints. I need to relate this slider joint to the revolution with a motion link. Motion link between the slider and the revolving of the wheel. Now I don't know how far it's going to go, so I'm going to cancel that and take a measurement. I'll go to measure and pick on the rim of the wheel. This gives me the circumference, which is the distance it will roll in one 360 degree revolution. I'll click to put it on the clipboard. I'll go back to my motion link between the slider and the revolve. The distance will be the distance I just measured. I'll paste it in there. And now it's going the wrong way, so I'll reverse it. And I have to say OK. I'll then hide the joints, and I'm all finished. As you can see, the wheel rolls tangent to the plane at the right speed. In the next example, we have three components. Two of them are identical, and they are grounded in the assembly at a certain distance apart to accommodate the table. We have the tail itself and we have a transit, dummy transit pin. The first step is to put a pin and slot joint on the transit pin and the slot. So we go to pin and slot. We'll pick on the transit pin first and then we'll come over and pick on the center of the slot. The motion is wrong so we'll show the motion we're looking for the slide motion will be in the y direction. 
say OK. Next thing we want to do is set the limits of this joint. If you go to the joint and right click and say joint limits, you'll see minimum and maximum. We're going to go to the slider and pick the minimum and we'll see a little icon come up. The maximum is this one right here, so we'll drag it up. And notice the maximum is actually the minimum, and it's three inches, so it goes into the minimum category. You must say respect sign. Even though it's three and this one's zero, it's minus, so it must go in the minimum. We say OK, and we now see that we have control over how far the pin can move. The next step is to add a rotational joint. It just so happened I made this transit pin, so this surface goes right against the inside surface of the table to position it accurately between the wall mounts. This will be a revolve joint. So pick on revolve, then pick on, I'll pick on this one first, and the transit pin second. say OK. Now we need to set the limits of this. So we go up and we right click on the revolve joint and set limits. Pick minimum and maximum and the they're hard to see sometimes but these little errors will help you adjust them. This is the Well, right now it looks like the minimum. I'm going to make the minimum 0 and the maximum 90. It may be a little different. They are definitely different. So let's just change those. Let's go around here to make this the maximum. And the other one will take it to be the minimum. They're not quite zero, but that's good enough. So we have the joint limits set. So now we're all done. So all we got to do is we move it up and we can rotate it down. I don't really have my limits correct on my table, but you get the general idea. In the planetary gear example, we're only going to do one planetary gear. If you plan to do all three, you repeat the steps three times. We have four components inside this assembly, the ring gear, the planetary gear, and the dummies for each. The dummy components will carry extra constraints. The first step is to constrain the ring gear to a point sketch which I put in space earlier. I'll use a revolve joint for that. I will lock this joint because I don't want it to move at this point. Next step, I'm going to be working with the dummy ring gear, so I'm going to activate it. So all features fall underneath of it. I need a tangent plane on the outside surface. Again, it doesn't matter where you start. If you're going to work on all three, your next plane should be 120 degrees to this one. So you pick on this surface, then pick on this as a reference, and then roll it around 120 degrees. I'm not going to be using that one, so I'm going to turn it right back off. Next thing I want to do is make a sketch on this work plane. I need a point dead center and since I extruded this dummy gear uh, symmetrically I know the origin is right in the center so I'll turn it on. Pick up point and come over and place a point on the origin. Finish my sketch and turn the origin back off. Next thing I want to do is add me a joint origin to that point. 
Again, if it snaps to the center, turn it off and start over. Notice it's tangent to the rim. Say OK. At this point, I want to go back to the top level. Activate it, and I want to add a revolve joint between the dummy and the ring gear on the far side. So I'll go to revolve, pick on the dummy, pick on the far side, and it's in place. Next thing I'm going to do, the, the ring gear is in my way, so I'm going to make it invisible. I need to place a joint origin now on the dummy planetary gear. So I've got to go over here and I want to make it active. That is this right here. And now I'm going to put the same type tangent plane on this one. I only need one because this is a single sketch. Again, sketch on this. And you want to put a point again dead center. I'll turn the origin on to help me along. Finish my sketch and turn the origin back off. Then I'll add me my joint origin. To that point. Go back to the top level and make it active. Now what I'm going to do is hook this joint origin to this one with a rigid joint. Joint, rigid, pick on this joint origin. And this joint origin. They go together. Say OK. You can't see them on this side, they're flush, but they're slightly different on the other side, which we'll work with. Next, we'll be adding a revolve joint between the uh, planetary dummy and the planetary gear. Revolve. This came from an STP file, so notice when I pick on this edge, it only highlights half of it. That's normal. Now I'll pick on the outside edge of this one to put it on center and say OK. The next thing I'm going to do is turn off the visibility of all dummies and turn the ring gear back on. Then I'll look at it straight on. I need to line the teeth up as best I can. It looks pretty good. If it's not, be sure you line them up for the next step. The next thing we want to do is add a motion link between these two gears or these two uh, revolves. So the revolve, first of one, will be uh, the dummy gear, which is this one, and the second one is this one. So it's a motion link between these two. You can pick them ahead of time if you want and go to motion link. Now the ratio will be is 4 to 1 or 90 degrees to 360. I may not get the one right to start with. I didn't. This will be 360 and this will be 90. You really can't see much with it going so fast so just stop it and say OK and then just look at it closely and just see if it's working correctly. Uh, it doesn't look too good. I think I got them backwards. So I'll go back and pick up my motion link, edit it, and change it back like I had it to start with. It takes some trial and error, but that's okay. Now let's take a look again. It needs to be reversed. Looks like it's got the right ratio. It just needs to be reversed. So we'll reverse it. So now it looks very good. So this is the example of using dummy components to make a planetary gear. Hope you enjoyed this video and I hope it helps you work in Fusion 360 better.